Hi, I'm Andrew Warburton. I'm the Property Advisor. And in this video, I'm going to discuss the question of Mellow Roos. Is it double taxation? Do you want to pay double tax? Well, make sure you watch this video through to the end before you answer this really important question. Can I ask you to do this, particularly if you're new to YouTube and you watch my videos? Would you click that subscribe that you see right underneath the video? It really helps us to see that you're enjoying our videos. And if you want to place a comment and ask questions, we'll be glad to answer your questions. So click that subscribe. It makes a big difference to you and to us because you'll be notified of our updates that come out four or five times a week. Now, to this important question, what is Melarus and is it double taxation? Let's ask the question right up front. Where did that come from? Well, Melarus is actually called the Melarus Community Facilities Act. It was passed in 1982, surprise, surprise, by a congressman, Mr. Mello, and an assemblyman, Mr. Roos. Hence, Mello Roos. Those guys went down indelibly in history. There's a lot of controversy about Mello Roos. To this day, there are those against and those for, and you're going to have to decide because bottom line, you pay. So let's have a look at it. 1982 Community Facilities Act. Here's how it works. In the Mello Roos Act, two-thirds of landowners have to agree to the additional taxation. This is not an ad valorem tax, it's a different type of tax. They have to agree, two thirds of the landowners. So of course you can imagine all the arguments in Congress that, that to the state Congress, that, that that's the, the state legislature, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, two thirds of the people, so if it's not good, they won't vote. But they kind of missed a little, a little idiosyncrasy there that the vote for Melarus is done before the land is developed. And guess who owns two thirds of the lot? The developer. And guess who benefits from the Melarus tax? The developer. So the developer just casts two thirds of the vote and it passes. So Melarus is here to stay. Two thirds of the landowners have to agree with the additional tax. The tax covers within the community facilities district. So understand this, the local government sets up a community facilities district. It's not done at the state level, it's done at the local level. That community facilities district issues a bond under the Melarus laws. It issues a bond that is now attached to all the homes in that development for 20, 25, sometimes 30 years. On a $400,000 home in the area where we are, sometimes that bond is an extra $2,500 a year, sometimes $3,500. I know two developments where it's $4,000 more a year. So it's significant because guess who has to pay for it? You do. So the money is used for fire, police, school, water, sewer, infrastructure. The idea is that the communities will be better communities because of more taxation. You have to decide in this video if that's true or not. So stay with me to the end and hear all the facts before you get all worked up about it. Remember the bond is not connected to the value of the house, unlike property tax. It's connected to all of the homes within a development. So whether your home goes up or your home goes down, the money you pay for that bond stays exactly the same. So when somebody selling you a house includes the Melarus in the property tax and tells you it's 1.7%, they are 100% incorrect because the Melarus does not go up or down depending on property value. And in California, property value never, ever stays the same for very long. Now, that gives you the background on Melarus. Let's look at this. What about property tax? Because Melarus is incorporated in your property tax bill, but there's a difference with property tax. In 1978, Prop 13 was passed in California. And Prop 13 was specifically designed that there would not be too much taxation on real property because that would deter Americans from being able to buy property because they wouldn't be able to afford the tax. Therefore, the American dream would be <coughs> next. So Prop 13 was passed. And in Prop 13, property tax cannot exceed in the state of California 1% of the value of the property, ad valorem tax. It cannot exceed 1% of the value of the property. Hear me out here. 
There is allowed a 2% of the 1% maximum increase per year, cost of living increase, if you like. So it's 1% plus 2% of that 1%. That doesn't mean you go 1%, 3%, 5%. It's 1% with a 2% cost of living index. So the local governments looked at this and they hammered on Sacramento and said, we need more money so that when a builder comes into town, we can have new schools and we can have fire stations and so on and so forth. The argument on one side said, if you make the builders pay for that, the price of the home goes up to cover the cost. And the local governments wanted the builders to come in because they generate a ton of tax. So they made a deal, the Belarus uh, issue. And through Belarus, they said, okay, we won't change the 1% base tax because we're not going to attach it to the value of the house. We're going to attach it to the house in property taxes. And if they don't pay it, we foreclose. But it's attached to the development as a whole rather than the individual house value. That was their sneaky little wiggle around it. So property tax has a 1% base, 2% cost of living per year of that 1%. And on top of that, if you see a new home development, that new home developer has made a deal with the local government. The local government set up a community facilities district. The community facilities district has issued a bond and that bond has to be repaid for the next 20 to 30 years. By whom? By you, by the homeowner. Yes, you get the schools, yes, you get the parks, but you have to pay the bill. Let's look at the pros and cons of Melarus and wrap this up. The pros are, and I just said it, that the community tends to have more improvements. You find these Melarus bonds, particularly in our area after 2002 or so, there's a proliferation of them, particularly in areas that were high desert or there was no development because they needed schools, they needed sewer, they needed water, they needed infrastructure, they needed parks. And so there's a you know, millions of dollars is raised and then stuck to all the homes, but you get the improvements. Now, in addition to the pros of this, the house price theoretically is going to be lower because the argument is the builder doesn't have to pay for those developments, you do. So even though your house price is lower, the taxes are higher. Now, what about the cons of Melarus? What's against it? Here's a couple of really, really important things. When you walk into a new home and you see it and you're excited and it's all sparkly and it's wonderful, you don't ask them what the Melarus tax is and you sit down, you agree to pay $429,000 and you find out the tax bill is going to be seven, dollars $8,000 a year. If it's 1% and it's four twenty nine, dollars it should be $4,300 a year. But you look at the tax bill and it's $8,000 a year. When you go to sell the home, one of the first things that buyers ask is, how much is the property tax? And it's not a new home anymore with flags flying and free water in reception. Now it's, you're just a house like everybody else and people come along and say, how much is the tax? And if the tax is high, they will very often pay less for the home because that taxation affects their payment. And as a buyer, when you consider Melarus, let's say, I'll give you a quick example. Let's say you are approved for $400,000 to buy a home. Let's say the Melarus tax is $2,400 a year, which is $200 a month. So $200 a month, additional tax on top of the 1%. Did you know that every $10,000 you borrow in a loan right now costs you somewhere between $35 and $45 a month? Let's call it 50 bucks. So you borrow $10,000, $50 a month. If you qualified for $400,000 and now you have $200 a month additional taxes, 50 goes into 200 four times, four times 10 is 40, you qualify for $40,000 less. And often young people will go into escrow, $400,000, they've got a qualification letter. In escrow, it turns out there's a Melarus bond and their lender says to them, I'm really sorry, your debt to income ratio is too high you don't qualify anymore. These are the issues to talk about with whomever is selling your home. If you speak with my team, we will show you every home and tell you what the taxes are before you get excited about the home. Make sure you ask that question. What is the base tax and what are the special assessments and get it in writing before you make an offer so that you can close on that deal and you can afford it when you do close. So there it is. There's the facts. What do you think? You want to pay more tax or less tax? You want to have a slightly more improved community, maybe not quite so improved community? 
That's up to you to decide. But now, because of the property advisor, you know what Melarus tax is. Don't forget, click that subscribe because we will save you money. We will save you time and make sure you get our updates four to five times a week on how to make money on real estate in the United States of America. Thank you for watching.